Oh, it's not coming. Oh, ooh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it's like instantaneous. How's it, gang? How are you today? Today's Wednesday, the 28th of April. Um, day Wednesday. Day Wednesday. Yep. Hello, hello. I'm Uncle Charlie. And I'm Mel. And that's Uncle, Uncle Mel. Okay. We only one year apart. That's Uncle Mel. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. Let me make my. Um... Yep. How's everybody and... doing on Hump Day Wednesday, guys? A lot of stuff going on. Tonight, we got a good show, right? You, you surprised me, but I'll let you do the honors. So please share. Please share, everyone. I think tonight's going to be a very, very interesting show. We have a very interesting guest who wanted to come on, and we said, yes, of course. We make time for everybody. Yeah, one, of our, one of our close friends, Patsy and I, uh, was uh, one of the uh, people that tested positive with COVID. And I'll let her tell her story. She'll be on at 7 o'clock, but... Um, I called her up today and, and, you know, because she had posted, you know, this show has identified a lot of heroes, uh, you know, people that stood up, that spoke up, that spoke out, and we consider them heroes, uh, along with the frontline workers and the, and the first responders. And, and you, you know, we have so many people that have spoken up uh, in, a, in the interest of safety. And, and I, I see tonight's guest, Tiffany, as no, no different. Uh, so I had received a call last night from her sister asking for advice because her sister had tested positive and her sister was with her daughter. And I just said, tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, get to the convention hall and get your daughter tested, a 15 year old daughter. Today, I reached out to Tiffany to uh, to, to her sister first to find out how everything was going. And then I called a uh, message Tiffany and we spoke on the phone and um, I was so proud of this girl for going on social media to let everybody know that she had tested positive and that she wanted, you know, it's very hard to remember, Charlie, you always talk about this, man. So hard to remember who you may have come in contact with. Exactly. So she went to social media and let everybody know knowing that some people would, and they have, and, and we'll talk about that later, but you know, when someone tests positive and they, and they go out and let the world know, I, to me, I think that's a responsible thing to do, Charlie. We always said that, um, you know, when I had that little scare where my coworker had come in direct contact with a positive person, yeah. we put it out there because I don't remember everybody I came in contact with. And I called the Kupuna that I knew I had come in contact and let them know. Uh, thank God I was negative, but nonetheless, so she's a hero in my eyes. She's a hero, and uh, we're going to have her on tonight. Uh, she wanted to come on and and share her story and let everybody know. I, I think that's so brave and bold to come out and say, hey, I don't know if I came in contact with you. She works at Troy's, and she'll talk about that tonight. We don't know where she picked it up from. We have no idea, and, and, and no one does. But she wants to let everybody know that if you, by chance, came in contact with her, to go get tested. That's that simple. So I consider her a hero, Charlie. I appreciate her and her sister for uh, coming, uh, coming forward and sharing with me so we can get her on the show. Um, I'm looking forward to tonight, man. And I tell you, uh, what we're seeing today with the cases, with the break. And you know, Charlie, what's really scary is it's not one cluster. It's, it's starting to pop up all over. And that is where we're going to be in trouble. So uh, I'm just going to say this warning one time. Um, I, I don't expect any of our viewers to see it differently. But, you know, keep the comments civil. I know that she has gotten some, uh, some negative <laughs> posts because they blaming her. Well, you know, let, let, why don't we do this? We, we've always asked, and you can ask until you're blue in the face. You know, like, listen, the mighty button go and pow. We don't need to deal with that because 
like most people, they want the information. Okay. And I, like I said before, it is very, very funny. I it shouldn't say funny, but if you let's do a comparison. The police department will put something out on Crime Stoppers asking for help in locating a certain person. Okay, that is no problem. But when you have something like this, that means, that really means that we can actually put a stop to the spread. If we can get as many people that came in contact, get them tested and make sure it didn't go beyond those borders, we get a better fighting chance. But everything is off. So we got to go and ask people, if you have been um, contacted, if you have tested, and you feel you want to get the message out because you don't think that enough is being done, because granted, you cannot remember everybody you came in contact with. And if this is a platform that will help you get the word out there, you're like Mel said, you're a hero. You, you're getting a message. And you know, for those lolos that, that have nothing better to do but blame, blame, blame. A responsible person, a responsible person will always put everything out in front, despite of what might happen to their, their uh, personal lives because it is. But you know what? They're trying to save lives. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, nothing wrong with that. Something's wrong with you if you get the mentality that, you know what, I think I'm the bestest person today. And you know, to tell you the truth, I don't think you got the gonads enough to walk up to anybody and try to dash them right in front of your face. You'll do it, you know, okay, keyboard warrior. You'll do it that way. You know, this show is uncensored, unedited, unscripted. We all know that. And this girl, when I went to her Facebook page and I saw some of her posts, woo! Gonna be fun tonight, guys. It's gonna be fun. Uh, uh, somebody just asked, "Who's our guest?" Our guest is Tiffany. She just found out she was and and this she she found out because she got sick. It wasn't one of those contact tracing or go stand in line. She got sick and uh, she still has some symptoms. So again, we'll let her share that story. You know, you, you talk about the transparency, Charlie. You talk about the uh, um, uh, being open with the public. Uh, You know, and prayers and condolences go out to the family of the, the little child that passed away because of COVID. But you know what drives me nuts? Under the age of 10. Yeah, like if they told us he was five or six or seven or four or three, like we wouldn't know who that person is. <laughs> when a child gets killed in a car accident, God forbid, or gets, gets killed by, by a crime or whatever the case is, drowning or what, the media will always say a six-year-old child, a four-year-old child, an eight-year-old child. Now it's COVID, we can't tell you. Can't tell you. HIPAA. Or whatever the hell, the excuse. The, Charlie, it makes no doggone sense. You, you, you cannot identify a person just because someone told you the age. Yeah, okay, what if they told you it was eight? They're from the mainland. How the hell are you going to know? So again, the secrecy to me is, is damaging. Yeah. It's damaging. It, 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 it chips away at the trust of a people, of the people that already have problems trusting our state. So I'm glad I'm seeing the comments. Everybody's appreciating, Tiffany. I cannot wait. Um, Again, I cannot emphasize or overemphasize the, the, what this girl is going through. Um, she, she, she's still in the middle of it. She still has the symptoms. And uh, so it's frightening. You it's know, frightening. No. And yet she's willing to come forward tonight to let us know what her story is and to let people know, if you came in contact with me, we'll get tested. You know, I love it, man. Tell you, you know that thing about the age. If they really wanted to be politically correct, just say this child was under the age of one hundred. <laughs> if you don't want nobody to fight out, I think now more than ever, it's important for the state, for our leaders, to be transparent with the people. 
I mean, it should have happened from day one, but it's never too late. Um, and I, I just, it drives me nuts. I mean, you know, we know, and you know this, Charlie, a lot of the schools now have, have cases have popped up in a lot of our schools. Um, we're, we're on the verge. I don't, I don't know this. I don't know this at all. Um, because I haven't spoken to the mayor or I haven't asked the mayor's office uh, directly, what, where are we in the, in, the, in the tier system? With the amount of cases, we had six more today. Uh, with all the testing that we did today, I can only imagine what, uh, what the test count or the counts will be going forward. And, and after tonight's show and everybody that may have come in contact with Tiffany will get tested. But people, we knew this and we have been saying this for a long time, you know, Tr safe travels is not safe. You heard Dr. Lee mention that the other night. Um, and, and they need to accept that and deal with it. And if in fact, the belief of our state leaders, the governor, Lieutenant governor, is that the risk of COVID is not worth the loss of an industry, then say it. Say it, but don't minimize this virus to make you guys feel like you guys are acting in the best interest of the of the state, because you're not. And they need to get a hold of that soon. Well, this because was... every morning, Charlie, every morning, you know this, every morning you watch the KHON news and you hear how wonderful we're doing and how we're going to be open and that we're immune and immune. Come on, man. I don't, I don't even I don't even listen to that banana because I want to start my day good. See, well, ladies and gentlemen, you want to start your day good, just don't listen to it to that hogwash. But what I will say is this: you remember some time ago when we talked about children? Oh no, CDC, oh this and that, telling that kids they're resilient, they, they, they're not gonna get affected, they're not they're not gonna catch COVID, right? And then all of a sudden, boom, we get an explosion of Kauai. And what makes Kauai dangerous is we don't have the population base like Honolulu, 1 million. We're just a measly 70, 80,000. So the numbers does have a direct correlation to that population base right there. And I think the sooner the state administration knows that, they better send some help over here and they better start thinking that, hey, if this thing is now truly a pandemic, which we was always worried about, but yet we we're fear mongering. So that's why they said you guys are fear mongering. No, we were just telling everybody, be prepared. What's wrong with that, right? If you go into shock infested waters, I will tell you, you know what, brother, you have better chance go in the cage. You don't like swim. You don't like swim out there. You can get eaten. And what happened? You jump outside of the cage, you get your leg bitten off and you sit swearing. The shock beat me. Hey, Lolo, we told you, get in the cage. With what's happening right now, some, somebody has to, uh, you know, sound the alarm that young ones are getting affected. We should have known that because Michigan is a prime example. In one day, 248 um, children hospitalized. Just one crack. You know, we, we, we said this was gonna happen. Um, a lot of people did. A lot of states opened up. Uh, my daughter texted us last night that Port, I mean, uh, Oregon shutting down most of the counties. I talked to my dad today. Seattle is shutting down a lot of their counties. And Kauai, uh, Hawaii, e como mai. Come, welcome. We don't learn. We're gonna learn. Well, we got TIFF coming on. There she is. Hi. You know, you know something, TIFF. We use false or fake backgrounds, and yours <laughs> looks real. Is yours real or is that a? Yeah, it is. My God. Well, I sit outside on our patio. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you're coming in loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight, Tiff. Uh, of course. You know, you know Uncle Charlie up there? Of course. Yeah, you know. hi, Uncle. Um, you know, we shared a little bit about, about you. I'm going to save that for you. I want you to share your story. But 
you know, we are uh, honored to have you on tonight. Uh, you are a hero. You are a hero for uh, speaking up and speaking out. Uh, what, what you're going through right now is scary. It's frightening. Mm -hmm. And um, I spoke to you for about five minutes and uh, had the sense that, you know, you, you are a very responsible person. And uh, for that, uh, Uncle Charlie, and I guess Uncle Mel, <laughs> thank you. And our viewers, thank you. Uh, we, are, we, have, we have a ton of people watching. Um, so Tiffany, why don't you start by introducing yourself and then, um, then we'll go ahead and share your story. Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Tiffany Blackston. Um, on Facebook, my name is Tiffany Kekona. Kekona is my middle name. Um, and I just wanted to share, well, I recently went back to work after taking a year off of work. Um, my last time working was March 17th of last year. And I work at Troy's Karaoke Bar in Lihue. Um, and I recently back, went back to work three weekends ago. So um, when they asked me to come back to work, I decided, you know, I can, I can help and give my help. Um, but being the situation, how it is now, um, how the island is now, I knew I wouldn't be able to survive going back full time. So I'm still able to collect but also work a few days um, to help out at the bar. Um, about, I wanna say a week or two ago, I started um, a cough and it's like a dry cough. And I thought it was, you know, just being around people um, after isolating myself for so long, I thought it was just me getting my usual uh, yearly sickness, the yearly cold. Um, and so I, I really didn't think of it, think of it as anything. Um, and then last week I had a fever for one day and I thought it was just because, you know, being out and, and going back to work and just not getting the amount of sleep that I usually used to get during during the pandemic. And so um, the next day I woke up completely fine. And um, for me, what prompted me to get tested was being back at work, you know, coming home. I do have um, neighbors who we live on the same property that have little kids, you know, I do coach. I just started coaching KYF cheerleaders um, you know, so just being in the community, I, I, I took it upon myself to, to stay safe and get, get tested whenever I needed to. So the last test I took was on the 12th, I tested negative. And then yesterday I went to go get tested being that, you know, I still have this cough. Um, it was two weeks later from the last time I got tested and it turned out to be positive. Um, today I took another test and I have yet to get my results from that. Um, and that was at, so yesterday's test was at well, um, convention hall. And then today's test I took at the hospital. Hey, hey Tiff, real quick. Okay, so you, the last test you took that was negative was on March 12th. Yeah. When did you start getting the symptoms, the cough? No, not the... March 12th, April 12th. I mean, I'm sorry, April 12th. Yeah. When, when did you start getting the cough? Um, it happened around um, last week. So Department of Health is tracing that I contracted it last Monday on the 19th. Um, and I did go to, to a party that had 20, less than 25 people, but we weren't wearing masks. And then I went to work. And then the next day I went to the, the drag brunch at the Sheraton, um, on Sunday. And then that week I got sick. So last week, Tuesday, I believe I, I had a fever. My body was hot and I just thought it was 
you know, um, just running it hard all weekend, you know, and not having enough sleep. Um, that's what I thought it was, but I saw, I just stayed in bed all day. Um, and then for the next two days, I was just at home, really not thinking anything, you know, and then, um, I went back to work on Saturday and I was perfectly fine. So let me, real quick, uh, Keola, Keola Kaiminao just uh, posted a while ago. He said, hi gang, thank you. Thank you, Tiff. Uh, Mel and Charlie, I got tested positive too and I'm in quarantine. Keola, prayers to you, man. Um, prayers to you guys. You know, all of you guys that come forward and share, uh, nothing but um, appreciation for you guys. I know it's tough and... Uh, let me ask you a question now. So this, the test result you got yesterday, right? That you tested positive yesterday was the first time you had a positive testing. Yes. Okay. So the 12th, you were negative. So the, I guess the um, DOH went back seven days, seven or eight days. During the yeah. So period. they went back. Um, the 19th would have been my incubation period which was last Monday. Yeah. Okay. So did they ask you questions? It sounded like you said you were at three places. You were at Troy's, you were at the drag show, and you were at a party. Were you mm -hmm. able to provide all names for close contacts to them or, so, you, did, or you did the best that you could? Um, so what had happened was I told department of health you know where i was during those three days they said that um it wouldn't matter because my incubation period started on the 19th and i was i did personally tell all my friends who was at that party on saturday i did that's why i posted it on my facebook because department of health wasn't gonna contact everyone they were only going to contact four people, which was my sister, my, my two sisters, my niece, and my tattoo artist, because I had just gotten a tattoo on Monday. And, and we, the shop was closed. So, you know, we were like freely talking. Um, so yeah, they were only going to contact four people, but on my way home thinking in my head, I know like 40 people off the top of my head that I was in contact with for the past week and a half, you know? So that's why I posted what I posted on my Facebook because I know a lot of people follow me who do come to Troy's that I don't have their number or their way of contacting them. And I wanted to make sure that every because what if somebody who came to Troy's was the one who had it and they didn't know or they didn't they knew but they still came out you know so that's why I wanted to take it upon myself to to tell everyone that I'm I, I'm completely fine besides having a cough you know and being short of breath here and there but I'm perfectly fine like I only mm. today I lost my sense of taste Today was the first day that I ate something this morning and I couldn't taste anything. Um, I do have a loss of appetite, so I try to eat, you know, every so often, but I kind of taste nothing. So at least that's a good thing. I can start eating healthier. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I lost, you know, I lost taste because my wife just forgot to put the food in front of my on, on my place setting, so that's why I never have taste. <laughs> I know, I can still smell. The food smells good, but when I put them in my mouth, I can taste nothing, so. Yeah. So how uh, how was uh, a lot of people asking if you were vaccinated? Were you, did you get vaccinated? Um, I didn't. Um, being that, you know, I, I wasn't putting myself out there. Um, I didn't get vaccinated. Um, my dad is actually persuading me to go get vaccinated now. And I probably will, um, honestly, because I still want to go see my grandparents um, who they're, they're getting up there in age. So yeah, I still want to go see them and, and spend time with them. 
and and now that I'm uh, part of the community even more, um, I'm a chair coach for KYF, so I I I'm probably gonna take more precautions and and do that. I do, however, whenever I'm at practice, I keep my mask on, um, even though we're outdoors and the the girls are without their mask at practice. Um, I for myself keep my mask on just to be safe on the safe side. One of one of the um, you know we we've spoken to a lot of a lot of uh, survivors of COVID or you know people in recovery of COVID and uh, one of the most famous is Angela Keene and and uh, she's been a long hauler. She's actually been having complications since she had uh, COVID last year. That after she got the vaccine, uh, she noticed that a lot of the problems went away. That the vaccine actually helped her get rid of some of that long haul symptoms. So. Uh, I'm going to ask you, and I, you know, again, we didn't, and I, and I apologize, I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, there's a lot of people that, that didn't get vaccinated or, or didn't think they should. If, if you could reverse the clock, uh, would you have taken the vaccine? Um, honestly, I wouldn't. Um, because I know people personally who are vaccinated that got COVID, mm -hmm. you know, and and I mean, I, I don't know how my respiratory system will be. I am an active hiker. You know, I, I go to Kalepa frequently up the mountain and that's all inclined. So I haven't, I haven't been up there obviously because I've been in isolation. Um, but that's probably one of the first things I'm gonna try and do is, is go up Kalepa mountain and, and see how, how my respiratory system will be. Um, if I'm out of breath or I get winded quicker than, than usual. Um, I try, well, going to the gym, I don't do cardio at the gym because, you know, breathing hard in a mask, like you can only handle so much. But um, yeah, I do go on the bike path frequently. Um, I never used to use my mask on the bike path, but obviously now, you know, that I know that I got COVID, of course, I'm going to be more cautious and use a mask when I go on the bike path just for the sake of others. Um, but other than that, it's, I mean, we all know it's out there and, and you don't really realize till, till it hits home, you know, and then you get it and then you have to kind of make adjustments of your lifestyle. So. So you, you get notified that you're positive um, and that's gotta be scary. And then what's what's the instructions from the Department of Health at this point? Now what, you get you isolate yourself uh, for how well, long? Well, so I, on, I was on the phone for a few hours with Department of Health yesterday afternoon and um, we were just doing like contact tracing, figuring out where I was, when, when I got, um, when I got, contr I contracted the virus. Um, and so they, um, because I got a fever on Wednesday, they went back two days. So they think I got the virus on Monday the 19th. Um, and so they said that I'm free to go tomorrow because nine day 10 days after the 19th is the 29th, which is tomorrow. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go out and about tomorrow because I got a positive test yesterday, you know, so I'm just doing my, my, my part and staying safe and not going out into a public place or, you know, and I'm so thankful for all my friends and family who who did reach out to me, who already dropped off stuff to my house, um, whatever I needed, um, and just reached out to me, which is wouldn't, nice. Wouldn't you think, uh, I'm just, just asking uh, your opinion, knowing that you tested positive just yesterday and them telling you that tomorrow you can actually go out because the period is over, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you think that maybe they'll tell you, can you take one more test just to be positive that you no longer are positive? Wouldn't yeah. you think they ask you that? Did they, did they mention that to you? They didn't mention that 
So um, I did go and take uh, another test this morning um, at the drive-thru at Wilcox. Um, I still didn't get the results on that, but um, even if it was negative, I would still stay home, you know, just because I'm, I know myself, like, I'm still coughing and I'm coughing even more now that I know that I have COVID, you know, so it's like, it's crazy now, now that I know that I have it, it's the symptoms are even more aware or more, um, just more, more active, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, I, I told the lady, my caseworker, I told her, I said, that's crazy that I can go free tomorrow. Why would you even tell me that? You know, like I just tested positive yesterday and you're telling me I'm free to go tomorrow. Like, why would I, why would I do that to, to the community? Why would I even do that to, to my friends and family? See, you're, you're being responsible by saying that, that, that I yeah. guess that's the point I, you know, um, because I'm sure there are those out there who are sick that maybe be in your position and test one day. And if they're given the green light, go the next day. They say, okay, thank you. I'm gone. But yeah. they, because what they're telling you is your incubation period, they're giving you an estimate, right? They, they're pretty much giving you an estimate. But if you come out positive again today, then basically what that healthcare worker told you, their estimations are all off. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the key. That's what you got to find out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's to, so I'm crazy. To, see, if I'm trying to get this timeline down, so you had the fever and they counted back only two days. Yeah. No. And yet we know that generally speaking, the symptoms don't really show up from what I've been told, maybe five days, six days, five, five to seven, seven days. Mm -hmm. So they were only counting two days. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and, and then my close my close contacts was only four people, they concluded. I said, no ways. That's why I went back two weeks. I thought of every place that I possibly went to, everybody that I possibly was in contact with, and I called them myself. I said, look, I tested positive yesterday, and I just want to let you guys know, just to be safe, go get yourself checked. You know? Who knows if you got it or not? So they know they are aware that you're still having a cough. Yeah, yeah. There's someone that, that calls me twice a day. Um, right, but I mean, but they, the, the person that told you that you could be out of quarantine or isolation tomorrow know that you have existing symptoms. Yeah. And they didn't tell you that you got to wait so many days until your symptoms disappear. No, she just told me take Dayquil if I if my symptoms get worse. But Who are you I have to the Department of Health or the public library. <laughs> right. <laughs> I when she's telling me this stuff, I'm just shaking my head, scratching my head, like I can't believe this is what we're relying on right now. This is what our community is relying on. Because so, did, did it's you... crazy to me. So they, they come up after, and you've, you've been a few places, and they, they've, they've narrowed your contact tracing to four contacts. Yeah. So the Department of Health is only going to count, I mean, contact four people. Yeah. Did you tell them you was going to go put them on social media and that you was going to go do your own contact tracing? Oh, yeah. I told her. I, she's like, oh, no wonder the, the um, testing center today was was the line was around the, the, the building. I said, yeah, because you only was gonna call four people. And that four people had come come out negative, but who knows who I, like, I don't know if I catch them from somebody who came to Troy's or, you know, what, what it was. But I took it upon myself because, I mean, I, even though I wear my mask all the time at work, you can still transmit the virus from your mask, like even if you're wearing a mask. So I don't know what she thought. She said that contact, close contacts were people who you were less than six feet um, apart from them for more than 15 minutes. Did, and you, to tell, my did, you, did you tell her that one, um, I'll do my best because I didn't have a tape rule 
and no did I have a stopwatch. <laughs> no, I didn't, but she was like, can you think? And she told me that I had a better memory than her. I said, yeah, obviously. I know what I did last week, you know, sorry, two weeks ago. So this caseworker is from Oahu. I'm not sure where she she's from, but it's a it's a Kauai number that um she's using. They use like a burner cell phone. Um, and did they did, did they refer uh, like sometimes you call and says, "Oh, may I speak to um, Sheila?" Or was this person a hi? Can I speak to health worker B one seven eight, please? <laughs> no, she she had a regular name and she saw okay. she sounded local. So, I okay. mean. Yeah, she's from Kauai. Because you know, you 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 know, Mel, you, you don't want to be like Hawaiian Airlines, right? When they when you go for make reservation, it's all the way in the Philippines. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. You start worrying. Yeah. I'm, 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 yeah, exactly. I'm I'm actually very concerned, uh, Tiff. I'm very 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 concerned about what you just said. Did they respond? Well, did you tell them you were going to go public and go tell everybody? And, and did, they, what did, they, did they say, yeah, go ahead, let everybody so, know? So yesterday, um, she said, try not to draw heat to the situation. I said, oh, no, I am posting it on social media because that's the only way I can reach almost everybody that I came in contact with or came to Troy's, you know, on Saturday when I work or Saturday, Sunday, Monday is my schedule over there. So, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that everybody who was in contact with me the past couple of days go and get checked because, you know, you never know. Okay. So they told you not to bring heat to the situation. In other words, don't. To don't like keep it. it hush hush. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty much what she, she was explaining to me. Wow. No draw and so when when she when she told me she was at the vaccine center today and she said oh the line was so long today at the um, testing center i said yeah because i posted it on social media and i'm sure everybody saw it you know and so that's what prompted everybody to go get tested and that's what we want yeah that is what we want we want everybody that came within 20 feet, 30 feet. If, I mean, yeah. come on, man. That, that's, that, that's just, uh, um, uh, 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 uh. anyway. Uh, I know it's, it's mind blowing to me. Like I, my, my cousin who uh, lives in Vegas, she contracted COVID, um, but she's a radiology tech um, and she scans COVID patients over a hundred daily. So Eventually, she was bound to to get it, you know. But but it's crazy that you know. So I barely just went back to work three weeks ago, and and I got it, you know. So well, it, it, COVID doesn't prejudge anybody. Right. Good. I'm I'm glad you said that because I think tonight's segment is really hearing from somebody who has COVID. Mm -hmm. and maybe share the information that you've been sharing thus far on how you think you contracted it. But giving people the understanding that it can be a real quick encounter yeah. that can yeah. give you this lasting effect. I think that's that's the message that we've been we've been trying to tell people that because it's for some reason this has been downplayed and because the person that's listening to Mel and I maybe they don't know anybody that's been directly involved. Mm -hmm. so everybody downplays it. But then when you got somebody like yourself coming on air and says, hey, this is unscripted, you tell it like it is, that people can start thinking, wow, it didn't take much to get it. And that's yeah. what we've been trying to say all along. Yeah, and this whole time through the pandemic, you know, I, I made sure like I take daily supplements, I take daily greens you know I drink lots of water try to keep myself healthy try to keep my immune system healthy and and it it can get anybody you know luckily I I don't have the crazy dramatic symptoms where I gotta be in a hospital on a incubator you know and stuff like that so today I did wake up a little more wheezy and and shortness of breath but I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I don't need to go to the hospital, but. 
if, I do if, do if, temperature checks throughout the day and stuff like that just to make sure. If you just I gotta see. monitor that, if you gotta really yeah. monitor that. Somebody, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to scare you, but I think you know um, that you know you gotta you gotta really really take it easy and until this thing yeah. goes away. And, uh, yeah. It, it, when, when it gets into the respiratory tract, that's where you know you can get some problems. So I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, we all it, praying for you, girl. I mean, you got a ton of ton of uh, people uh, gonna pray for you. You know what? What's what's bugging me is that you know it it's kind of falling into place and making sense now that if everyone that gets contacted by the Department of Health that tests positive and they're told, uh, you know, don't bring any heat to this, just go home and be quiet and don't tell nobody. That is the reason why no one really knows. You, you read the numbers in the, in the paper, but no one's talking because they're being told not to talk. That, yeah. that's, that, that infuriates me. And that even makes you, in my mind, a bigger hero that you would come forward and, and, and share. Uh, oh, I'm yeah, of course. And, and it's crazy because we're on a small island. People are going to talk. People are going to be negative about it. And I did hear something negative today um, that was brought to my attention. But you know what? What if I didn't say anything and I went back to work? And, you know, what if I still could contract it to someone else and I went back to work? So, I mean, I'd rather have said something than shut, shut my mouth and not say nothing at all, you know? So... Tiff, Tiff, let me just read this comment. Let me just read this comment real quick. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I, okay. I want to catch it before it scrolls. Kipia Kana just posted, yeah, Tiff, I haven't seen you in a while. You inspire me to just get tested anyway. See, if you did not share, that person won't get tested, wouldn't get tested. So mm -hmm. um, you, you're doing an amazing service. You're doing an amazing thing for our community. Um, of course. Have you been, has the health director um, suggested that you will pick up a um, pulse oximeter to, to test your, um, your, 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 um, your saturation, your oxygen levels? The one you no, I have, pulse? no, they haven't. They Maybe really you should haven't. ask them because, you know, it's, it's over the counter. You can buy it at Long's. It's a small button battery. But when you're having difficulty breathing, you know, your, your, basically your saturation should be above 95 yeah. That thing will tell you if you stay dropping real low that maybe you got to have medical intervention. Yeah, yeah. Instead of and just so to I it did. Up. I I know this is bad and it's a bad habit. I did used to vape, but as soon as I found out that that I had COVID, you know, I I threw my vape away, right in the trash because I mean obviously it's gonna mess with my oxygen levels and. And I, I mean, I'm, I, this is what, this I is live what by myself. So. Uh, my wife, Auntie Stephanie, just put a comment here. Um, I will try to get one to you. We're going to buy an, we're going to buy an oximeter. Because I oh, have, thank one. you. I, I'm an open heart patient myself. So when I'm having a hard time breathing, I want to know if my oxygen level is dipping. And it's very inexpensive. It also gives, it gives you a pulse rate. And it's, you know, so we'll pick one up and then we'll try to make, I'll try to get together with Mel and we'll, we'll get it to you. So at least you can monitor yourself that way. Yeah. I'll, I'll take care of that tomorrow, Charlie. I'll, yeah? take care of that. I'll take care of that tomorrow. We'll take mm -hmm. care of that. Um, Thank you. Compliments of, of, of Mel and Charlie. Uh, at least <laughs> no, you know, and again, you know, my, my concern is that because you still have the symptoms, or uh, yeah, you still have yep. the symptoms. You still mm -hmm. and, and off, and, and you said earlier that today you noticed that uh, more of the wheezing. I, I think we need to get that to you, uh, and and we'll talk offline, but uh, so I can find out where you're at. But we'll take care of that tomorrow morning, and 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 you get that, and and, and you need to keep. Uh, you have a call your doctor, man. Call your doctor and, and make sure your doctor is on track. But we'll get you that meter uh, tomorrow morning. Okay, uh, thank you. That, that's that's vital. Uh, that's vital. And yeah. So, um, someone actually reached out to me, um, to join this Facebook group of um people all over the world who are part of this um survivor, like this COVID survivor group, and I've been reading it today, and a lot of people 
have way worse symptoms than I do, um, which I'm thankful for, you know, but it's crazy, like, just the stuff that they're reading, they're sharing how they're coping with stuff. Um, a lot of people are, are adding what supplements to um, part to intake, you know, and stuff like that. So um, a lot of vitamin C, zinc, um, elderberry is a big one too that a lot of people are using. Um, I've been using this past couple of days, I've been using a lot of CBD um, CBD oil to help with the inflammation and, and stuff like that. So I always like to go the, the more natural route. Um, I hardly ever take medicine and I'm allergic to a bunch of different medications. So that's why I usually go the natural route. What a story, man. What a story. Yeah. I will tell you, um, you're inspiring a lot of people. I will tell you that just reading the comments. I, I don't know if you have Facebook running, but you, there's a lot of comments and very, ins you've been inspiring a lot of people. Yeah, so, it's there reading everybody's feed. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, and, and you don't, you don't have to answer. I mean, I almost don't want to ask, but has anyone that you have come in contact with that you notified got tested? Do you know if any anyone came back positive so far? I I I do. Um, I know about well besides Keola, um, my coworker. Um, I do know three other people who I've been in contact with this past ten days um, that have it. I'm not sure if. I passed it on to them or they gave it to me. Um, I honest, we don't know because of the situation, you know, and how, how Department of Health is going about everything and how Kauai is, you know, so. Let me ask you that, that, that people that eventually tested positive Obviously, that wasn't due to the Department of Health contact tracing. Was that as a result of your Facebook post? Yeah, it was a result of me telling them, look, I'm COVID positive. Go get yourself tested. Had I not tell them to go get themselves tested, they would have gone to work. They would have gone to work. They would have spread it more to their coworkers, you know, or their family members. And it would have just, you know, the, the domino effect. It would have just kept going. But they're hope, all in isolation hope, right now. I hope somebody from the Department of Health is watching this. Uh, I, I, I'm definitely going to share this video when it's done. To yeah, Department for Health. sure. I mean, because that's just kind of irresponsible, I think, if you ask me. I think because they know now that we have the variants. They know. And your test results will be submitted, hopefully, to see if it was a variant or not. It'll take a while, a little bit. But uh -huh. with the variants running around right now and, and, the, and the ease of this thing being transferred from person to person, you know, it doesn't matter who got it from who. And I know a lot of people are going to, you know, because it, no one knows if, if, like you just said, whether you were the carrier or someone else was, was the carrier. Yeah. And I it haven't traveled. I haven't traveled anywhere. I literally just went back to work two, three days a week for the past three weeks. You know, I don't go out besides going to the drag show on the, ninth, the 18th. You know, so this is this is what happens when when most of these things. I was going to ask you if it is possible, and uh, you know, I know you like to do the holistic way of, and, and you're allergic. Mm -hmm. You got to tell yourself there's going to come in, if it does ever come, and I pray God it doesn't. But if it comes a time that your breathing just gets so difficult, you got to get that medical intervention because there's nothing else is going to get you past that. And I see oh, that. Oh yeah, that, for that, sure. That, that's what happened to my brother, because he was talking to me on a Sunday. By Tuesday, he was no longer talking. By the next Saturday, less than a week later, my brother passed away from COVID. It was that fast. So I'm not saying it to scare you. I'm just saying, because you've been tested and you positive, you got to keep track of it until you're out of the woods, meaning you're oh, yeah. back I'm, negative. That's, that's yeah, what I I'm want. Yeah, I'm definitely monitoring myself yeah. and... And I know, you know, I know my body well enough to be like, Good. I know when enough is enough and I got to go to the hospital, you know, and, and I know there's people around me that, that are willing yeah. to, 
to risk themselves to go bring me to the hospital. It need it be, but yeah, no, I, I know I, I try to be on the holistic route till enough is enough and I cannot handle anymore. And that's what prompted me to, to go and take day quill um, last week because my body was hot and, and I didn't know if I was sick or if, you know, I was just overworked or what it was, but yeah, I definitely took precautions to, to kind of bring my fever down for sure. And one last thing, you know, sharing this story is so great for the viewers. I mean, when you get a mm -hmm. chance to go back and look at all the comments and Mel, yeah. Mel said, it, it's, it's so beautiful. You know, I just want the viewers out there to know we're not here trying to bash the health department. That's, that's not our goal. Yeah. Our goal yeah. is trying to stop this damn virus. And mm -hmm. sometimes when there's a little hiccup in the engine, somebody got to call it out. So we kind of change how it's done. So we get more cooperation because really what you want, I mean, just imagine, and I use, I use this uh, analogy with uh, Mel, just imagine if we had crime stoppers and nobody wanted to call in, even though they saw, they saw the perp they're looking for. Right. Nobody wanted to say anything kind of stupid, right? Right. And that's why that's why I posted on my Facebook yesterday, because Department of Health told me not to. But of course, I have to listen. I want my all my friends and family to know that that I had COVID positive And and if you was around me, go get yourself checked, you know. So luckily, like my most of my immediate family wasn't around me. But just so happened, I went to lunch with one of my sisters and my niece that day, right before I went to go get my COVID test. So, and I did, um, we had lunch at Deli and Bread. So I did take it upon myself to call Kevin, um, one of the celebrados and let them know, you know, that I tested positive. I was wearing my mask when I went into the shop, um, but being that I tested positive, um, we did walk through Deja Vu and Jean's Warehouse and I called and let them know too that whoever was there at this time, you know, just just for their safety, I I was COVID positive. So I just wanted to call and let you guys know. So See, I you're, just did you're actually that. You're, you're actually a walking app. You know, we always talk about developing these apps so everybody knows <laughs> who came in contact, but you're doing it for them. And yeah. I just wish everybody would do that. <laughs> they right. wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, and if and if whoever whoever I caught it from, you know, like if they had just done that, you know, at least we would have a better um, grasp on, on the situation on, on the virus and stuff. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to take it upon myself, um, being that I know so much people in the community and I'm involved in the community, you know, so I just wanted to, to do my part as being a citizen of Kauai. Hey, hey Tiff, are you familiar with the Aloha Safe app? Um, I'm not. Is that the uh, travel I'm app? Assume, I'm assuming the Department of Health didn't tell you to go download the Aloha Safe app. <laughs> no, they didn't really tell me nothing. Well, they well, just... Of course not, because they told you to shut up. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Tiff, do this for me, and, and we can talk offline, but there's an Aloha Safe app that you will download to your phone. Okay. It's free. It doesn't track you. Don't worry. But what it does is once you download the app and you get notified that you're positive, then you go in there and you click the button, then everyone that the, the phone tra tracks your location, right? Only, only in a sense of if I came around you, then and because I have the Aloha Safe app, it will tell me that I came in contact with someone that tested positive. They don't tell me who. They just tell me that go get a test. So I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll get with you after the show, and uh, you download that app because that way people that you may not know that you don't remember will be notified yeah. that they can go get tested. And um, yeah, and all the people that I was with at. Um at the party and we weren't wearing masks they all got tested today and all of them came back negative which was um which was good because i mean i consider them my sisters you know people that i truly care about 
um, and I care about their kids too. So it was it was a good peace of mind today um, after everyone was replying that their tests came back negative. Um, my close contacts, they are in isolation and they are, um, they're going to get retested again in a few days just because it was so fresh that they were hanging out with me. Um, so, yeah. We know, we know the incubation period can be anywhere from four to seven days, whatever it is, in some cases longer. So yes, definitely have them get tested again um, because your contact with them was recent so i mean yeah you know, they, need to, they need to retest they need to retest and um and and be and isolate until they, they until it's safe and uh you know and that's the that's the that's what contact tracing supposed to do uh we've always had you know charlie for a year now over a year and i hate to bring it up because he it makes him angry see i'm the mellow one he's the one that sometimes fly off the handle but what so, for real <laughs> <laughs> For over a year, Charlie has been pounding the drum about why don't, why doesn't the Department of Health or the state let the public know when there is a case in a public location? Uh, I use the analogy of a shark attack. If a shark bites somebody at a beach, they tell everybody which beach, but they won't do that with COVID. And Charlie has been, he's been pounding that for a long time. And if they did that, if you gave the Department of Health four locations that you were at mm -hmm. and that you had come around people, you would think that the state would tell the public that you wouldn't have to go to safe, uh, safe, Facebook or mm -hmm. your social media. You wouldn't have to come on this show. That the yeah. state would come out and say, hey, anybody that was at this restaurant, bar, store, food truck, on this day between this time, someone tested positive, you may want to go get a test. How yeah. difficult is that? And uh, so hearing your story tonight, it's clear, I think, that the state does not want to expose or, uh, what did you say? Uh, bring fire. What? what, what did um, you draw heat. Draw heat? That's what she told me. Draw yeah. heat? Yeah, draw it's heat to the situation. But um, yeah, so I did when I found out I was positive, I did contact um, Troy um, and they are closed today and tomorrow. They're doing deep cleaning and sanitation, um, bringing in the, the sanitized machine and everything like that. So they're, they're taking the precautions that, that they need to take as well. I know, um, the, guy, I know the guy who does that, that's gonna be there tomorrow. See, small island. Everybody know everybody. I think Charlie knows them too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're looking at them. <laughs> it's Charlie. Oh. <laughs> Charlie, yeah, be, uh, believe it or not, Charlie goes out to all of these locations um, and does all the disinfection and the the deep cleaning. So thank you, Charlie. You, thank you. Did you thank do you. that before the pandemic, or that's what? you do now well, because of the pandemic no the the the, the individual um who has his company <clears throat> he and i were um sort of like business partners back in the day when he owned platinum limousine service on oahu and so he needed because he flies his workers from oahu to all the different locations so he knew that i was up here and i said yeah i can help you i know pretty much what goes to uh, but yes i will be i will be at choice tomorrow bright and early about 5 30 in the morning when no one's around and i'm gonna give it one good work over because nice. you know I, I want people to be safe that's that's the whole goal it's it's not about ooh, this is what you do no it's because mm -hmm. anything's you know like i've always said and mel's heard me say this many times over even monkeys fall out of trees so until the day no monkey fall out of a tree, then I'll say, okay, it's safe to believe whatever. But until that yeah. point, no, 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 anything is possible. So you do the best job you can so nobody gets sick. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I look at the number of people watching. I look at the number of people that will watch this after. Um, I got to say- And over 400 people are watching right now. <laughs> That's crazy. 
Is that more than Auntie Rhonda's? Because I told her I don't give her hot rub on the viewers that are coming on tonight. Uh, you know, I would have to go back and <laughs> um, I was thinking about bringing her on tonight too, but then that would be that would be disaster. Because see, because we're uncensored, we cannot stop the f words from coming. So we gotta kind of yeah, me and her together. That would be uh, that would be a comedy show. We would yeah, have to so call it the Tiff and Rhonda show, not the Mel and Charlie show. You guys might have to do the spinoff and do your own and uh, <laughs> have us as your guests. I, I think she my just said uh, Rhonda, I win. Yeah, Rhonda just said you won. Um, I think, I think, you know, as we, as we progress through this pandemic and, and I, you know, we talk about this, I think every time we, every, every show is that this, this virus is real. And I think Charlie said earlier, when you're hearing it from someone that is living it, the, the impact is different than myself or Charlie or uh, one of the doctors that are coming on and and shared the story about COVID when it when you hear it from someone like you who's just a, a normal community person that it, it impacts people differently and with what's happening right now with the with the with the variants you know it's it's so confusing Tiff because you hear a week ago how masks were so important and then yesterday or whatever the CDC comes out and said ah if you vaccinated you don't wear masks. And you listen to some doctors and they're saying the variants are taking over the country and the world. And then others are saying, ah, we're in good shape. Yeah. I think yeah. The importance of and I mean, I've, I've been paying attention, you know, I, I've watched your guys show a few times. Um, and, and when like the doctors come on and stuff like that, and, and I do listen, um, I mean, now that I have it, I'm taking it a lot more serious. Um, but and that's before, natural. I was... that, that's a natural occurrence. I, I don't want you yeah. to, you know, some people think, well, you should have taken it serious. But no, 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 no. Until no, I mean, I did it. take it serious, but now that I have it and contracted yeah. it, like, I'm I just much let you know more that aware. It's what, what you're experiencing is totally natural. Yeah. It's yeah. Totally accepted when people got to understand that. It happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, sometimes, you know, things happen like that. Now you become the vehicle, you become the messenger that can help so many people. And I think you've done that tonight uh, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, you inspire me as well and, and you've educated me as well. And I think a lot of people watching tonight are looking at this a little differently than they did before they, they got to meet you. So mm -hmm. um, please know that you, you've, uh, you've done a lot of good tonight and we appreciate that, we really do. Um, no problem. I will, we will definitely, be in touch because uh, we're gonna follow the follow up on your progress and and you know we're all praying that you that you kick this thing and and get through this, but we gotta we we cannot underestimate or minimize this virus and Kauai right now is is at a place where um, I'm afraid that you know it's going to spread and it's gonna spread mm -hmm. quite a bit and. Uh, so your I mean, well, just overnight from me being positive, three other people or four other people that I know are positive. So, I mean, and I don't see them every day, but I was around them the past week and a half. So it's, it is alive and real. Remember, Mel, that we talked, you, you brought it up heavily with, uh, I forget, if I think, I think it was that Dr. Kimball, the one that's in Utah, that has a clinic out in Clint Kilowim. Mm -hmm. Remember when you, and, and Dr. The, the Big Island, our, our good friend, the kind of crazy guy, you said about the virus when it sheds, depending on the viral load, right? So maybe you may not, you might not have seen these people a, a lot, but if the viral load is high and, and you did contract it from them, that's how you get tagged. It's like you walk into a fog of that stuff, you know? And yeah. all it takes is the micro droplets, you talk in and it just comes towards you. But see, the thing is you can't see it. It's, it's, it's like a silent boogeyman. You won't know until your, your symptom starts to feel something that your body feels something is, is, is not right. And you go get tested. Other than that, you don't even know. And that's, and that's, that's what we've been trying to tell people. You know, how many people you know 
likes to walk through one burning house with just a lot of smoke. I know I don't. Because number yeah. one, I don't, I don't know how long you can breathe this stuff. Number two, you can get burned. This is the same thing. If the thing is being shed and it's coming out in volumes, oh my goodness. It's, it's not a pleasant thing to be around. Well, but, see, you know, had, had I not taken it upon myself to go get tested every few weeks, you know, because I returned back to work, I wouldn't have known. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known if, had I not got tested yesterday and I went back to work this weekend, imagine how much more other people would have got the virus. I mean, not saying that I, I not even, I don't even know if I still can pass it on to somebody or someone else can catch it, you know? So I just, well, if you have, if you're still suffering symptoms, chances are you, you can. And you have yeah. to assume that you can, you know, and, and that's why I appreciate you yeah. being responsible. I appreciate you doing what you're doing because you're helping a lot of people. And, uh, you know, no doubt in my mind, saving lives just by sharing your story. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, what I get out of this tonight is that if, in fact, anybody, any of our viewers or your family or your friends have even a slight fever, cough, go doctor. Go get tested, because because that's this that's how this variant is. It's very 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 transmissible, so yeah. uh, we we cannot forget that. And uh, so let's utilize this story from Tiff, who's so brave. You're a hero, girl. You are a hero, uh, and I just so you know what I gotta say. We talked before you came on. We said we have identified so many heroes on this show because they decided to stand up and speak out. And uh, because you're concerned about the community. So, man, we're proud of you, girl. I'm proud to know I, you. I'm, I'm more concerned about the community than about myself. That is pretty you. evident. I can tell you yeah. that, that is so evident in, in the way you, you, you're speaking tonight. Yeah, but remember, you cannot help nobody if you're not I know. able to. So you got to take care of yourself, girl. Yeah, you yeah. Because you are a unselfish person by nature. Yeah. So you're always there helping, so. Yeah, of course. Damn. I'm I'm stuck at home, but I'm 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 taking all the Netflix recommendations and <laughs> and so far all the recommendations have been good. So I'm enjoying that. It's crazy how um, you know. And if that gets boring, jump over to YouTube, and you know they have this thing called van life, right? You, you know, people living in their vans. Try go to Japan van life and see how they live on tiny little car and how they do it. It's, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, this Hawaiian at six feet, 120 pounds. I don't think I can fit in one small tiny car from Japan. Right. <laughs> Me either. Heavy claustrophobic. <laughs> well, that, that hour went by really, really quick, Tiff. Um, what, what, what are your final thoughts or comments or suggestions or whatever to the viewers? that uh, are just sending you so much prayer love right now. It's just, it's heartwarming. And any, any closing thoughts? Honestly, I just, I mean, you know, just, just do the right thing. If you know you sick, stay home. If you know you feeling like you in your brain, you think you get COVID, go get tested. You know, if you've been around a lot of people with, without a mask on go get tested like it's just had I not take it upon myself and do my due diligence of of getting tested every two weeks and keeping my family safe um that's that's the reason why I took it upon myself to go get tested somebody never called me and say oh you get contact tracing I took it upon myself to go get tested for my family you know, for, for the community, for the kids I coach, you know, and so I just wanted to do it for, for them. And, and just so happened, I got a positive test. So it happens to anybody. It can happen to anybody old or young. Um, I think somebody asked me how old I was. I'm 30. Um, yeah. And, and for the most part, I'm pretty healthy, but I mean, it can, Luckily, I'm, I have minimum symptoms, you know, and, and it's not taking over my body where I need to go seek medical attention. So, 
Awesome. That's it. This new variant, this new variant, they're finding that the new variant is really uh, going after the younger people. Um, so, man, good words, good words. Charles. Well, as always, I like to first of all, Mel, thank you for bringing on this lovely person, sharing her story, unscripted. That's the best kind. Because as a viewer, you, you, you just grasp it onto everything she says, which is amazing. And I, I, I thank you. Thank you very much, Tiffany. And to our You're viewers welcome. out there, I, I, I hope and pray that you, you leave tonight with some sense of what's possible, but what you can do, because you're getting it firsthand from someone who's been tagged by this, uh, this, this virus. And I know there are some people concerned. They ask me, you know, what do I wear when I go and disinfect? You know, I don't, I don't wear any Tyvek suit or anything like that. I'm vaccinated, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't. But I don't wear it because when I start to disinfect, I start right from the door before I even go on. The foggers are on already. So once I start laying down that heavy, that heavy mist, it's doing its job. And, you know, we've, we've never had anybody that got sick. So I just want to let everybody know that if you should see me in your neck of the woods disinfecting something, um, wave from a distance because probably it's dangerous to come close to me while I'm doing it <laughs> because that's the reason why they're calling me in. So I want to thank you and thank you, Tiff. And thank no you problem. to all of Somebody just friends. said, get her back on the show in two weeks. Yeah, they, a good follow up. A good follow up. Yeah, there's like about 30 people that said that so far. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we definitely will be keeping up and keeping track here. For yeah, the and I mean, I'm, I'm, I post. Since yesterday, I've been posting how I feel like today I posted that I still have a cough and it's more, more evident that it's, it's, I'm coughing more and I woke up a little wheezy today. Um, today, when I ate breakfast, I couldn't taste anything and all day pretty much I don't really have an appetite but um, I do take isogenic, so at least I get some protein shakes in me. Um, and I've just been drinking a lot of water, which is good. But other than that, I mean, there's not, not much I can do. Um, you got, you know, well over 400 people um, praying for you tonight and uh, are, are genuinely concerned. So we yeah. will be in touch and we would love to hear back from you in a couple of weeks. Um, to, so you can share that, that, that journey with COVID. Um, it's incredible. Uh, it's incredible. And, you know, some of the things were disturbing that we will follow up on. Uh, I don't like what I heard about uh, the contact tracing. Apparently it's not working like it should. Yeah. And that's something that I think that we need to uh, definitely look into. And we'll do that. But, but Tiff, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I actually have a question for you guys. Like, so I really don't know much um, true information. When do you guys think I should be out? I should take myself out of in isolation. Like, when do you guys think? Because I still coach cheerleading. I, I can go back work. I mean, I know I want to get a negative test before I do all that stuff. But when do you guys think I should get out of isolation? I, I think that you should contact your primary care physician, talk to your doctor, but just, I mean, at the minimal, um, 14 days. the symptoms got to go away. Uh, yeah. As long as you still have a cough, as long as you still have respiratory issues, uh, as long as you cannot taste, definitely you got to be isolated. I mean, that's just the, my non-medical, just from all the experts we've had on the show and from what I've read, yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, talk to your primary care physician. Um, that's that. But yeah, I don't know who this, who this person from the DOH is that said you can go and not even concerned about your symptoms. That bothers me. Uh, well, I know Charlie, uh, maybe Charlie can reach out to Dr. Capono um, yeah. tomorrow and, and get you in touch with Dr. Capono. He's, he's, a, he's been on the front lines of COVID for quite a while. He knows all this stuff. But um, yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm not telling her enough information. Uh, she's me, asking, she's asking me what my symptoms are. And I told her, you know, that 
I woke up wheezing today. I cannot taste anything today, you know, but she still told me I'm free to go tomorrow. Let Whoa. me ask you, does her does her name start with an R? Yes. Okay. Because several people already know who you're talking about. And they've got they already commented. They've got the yeah. same treatment. So this 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 definitely seems like it's not an isolated thing. It's sort of a pattern of this particular individual. So and hopefully it's a training issue. Yeah. You know, hopefully it's a training issue. We will find out tomorrow, I can promise you. In fact, I don't know if Sarah Blaine is watching tonight, but um, I can promise you that that will be made known tomorrow, first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. and that will be corrected. But uh, to, to release someone into the community that's positive with active symptoms is completely, totally negligent and irresponsible, in my opinion. And you don't need to be a doctor to figure that one out. So again, Tiff, we pray for you. We thank you. We will be in touch. I'll call you right after the show because I, I need to get your address. And um, someone offered to to provide you with some nicotine patches if if that uh, if you if you need the patch because you threw that vape thing. Oh, like I don't need. Okay, good. I'm strong strong minded. Yeah, well, that's probably I, the best thing that you could do. Was uh, I used to vape too? Yeah. And I told my you know I told my doctor I said my, my I said hey if you take away my vape. I went back smoking cigars. He said, no, smoking cigars is better than vaping. Do not vape. That stuff is bad for you. You so know, if you want to you how bad. Well, funny thing is the reason why I started vaping was because I stopped smoking marijuana. And mm. so it's been almost three months since I stopped smoking. So in this like little short period of time, I'm like, yeah, whatever I can. If I can kick that habit cold turkey, I can kick any habit. No, but if you want to, you know, like, you know, the patches, if you want to stop vaping and they don't have the patches for you, you take a piece of duct tape, you stick them on your vape and you put the vape on your arm and just walk around like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can that way. No, I think I could. I could. So <laughs> I have no doubt, Tiff, I have no doubt in my mind that you are strong enough. Uh, you, you've, uh, you've convinced me of that tonight. We love you, girl. Uh, we pray for you tonight. Everybody, before you put your head down on a pillow, that's right. That You got a round of applause for that. Thank yeah. you. Uh, love you guys. We'll be in touch, girl. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Uh, for our viewers, thank you so much for hanging out. And I hope you guys got informed and educated tonight. We will be back on, what is today? Wednesday. Today we'll is Friday. Friday. We'll be back on Friday. And uh, it's going to be hard to top this show, but we, we're going to try. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys. We'll see you guys on Friday night, 7 p.m. All right. Bye, everybody. Oh, oh. <laughs>